mind, you know, that's gonna separate me from the thousands. Got it. See, that's my problem. I'm unique. No, I know I am. I have something very special, way beyond my looks and my body. I'm gonna be the next great female action star that everybody's looking for. Okay, um, th let's talk about the shot. Are you sure you want to wear this harem outfit? Well, Harry picked it out. Do you think this is what's, what you want? What, it's not sexy enough? No, um, <laughs> it's plenty sexy, but... Okay, who's your favorite action hero? Um, Sly? Right, Sly, okay. Um, would, would Sly wear a harem outfit? Oh, no. No, he would not, okay? He'd be, he'd be stripped to the waist, he'd be greased down, he'd have a gun in one hand and a knife in the other. What the hell are you saying? I'm talking about the style of the shot, what it says. It sounds like you're trying to see Sandra topless. <laughs> no, I, I didn't say that. Yeah, I think you did. No, what I said was Stallone would be topless. So she should be. Well, not necessarily, but figuratively. I don't like the way you've been looking at her from the get. I haven't been looking at her anyway. I think you have. Harry, don't be a jerk. I'm your manager, right? Is that right? Please, 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 please. Look, I'm just talking about a picture, okay? I didn't mean to make you feel insecure. Insecure? Okay, not, in, not insecure, defensive. Defensive? Okay, not defensive, inadequate. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just trying to take a picture, that's it. I know exactly what you're trying to do. You're trying to promote my lady. He is not. I am not. <sighs> Look, there's no need for that, I'm okay? Kick your ass! <sighs> no, you're not. So don't even think about it. Quit it, Harry. He's really making you look like a fool. Oh, I wish you hadn't said that. You know what? I'm out of here, okay? I took this gig because I needed money. What I don't need is this abuse. Sandra, you can get someone else to finish the shoot. It's Sandra. What? You called me Sandra, but it's Sandra. I had it changed legally. Whatever. Sandra, Sandra, doesn't matter. This isn't over. <sighs> Sorry, Harry. No one humiliates me! No one! Chairman and CEO of Sun Bliss Clothing, I take a great deal of pride and pleasure in announcing our purchase of Azure Blue, 
effective Monday morning. You gave birth to Azure Blue, McKenna Morgan, helped it grow into the most successful swimwear line in the world. And I'll give you my solemn oath. I'll take good care of your child. Thank you, Carl. We are all very, very pleased. McKenna, easy. McKenna, please, please don't do this. Please, McKenna. We're all Fox, pleased and very excited. Stop. It's time for this great merging of McKenna. manufacturing and designing talent. Please don't do this. McKenna, you can't throw away 20 years. I love you. Back off. Hey, get out of the way. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be happy to answer all your questions. If you'll follow me over here, the viewers are your actors. That's the concerning. That's my wife. Ladies and gentlemen, right over here, McKenna and Mr. Powers will answer any questions that you have. Right over here. Thank you very much. I'm going to talk towards my wife. She doesn't want to talk to you. Go away. We were talking. And it was hopeful. I mean, it wasn't certain, but it was hopeful. And then six weeks ago, she goes off to a fat farm and has her eyes done. Maybe she's just trying to change her life. I don't know. There's just something very, very strange going on. And I, I know you're going to think I'm crazy about this, but... I don't think McKenna's McKenna. Not... Doing any no, talking. No, no, I know, I know. It's just that woman I saw at the press conference the other day. I don't think it's her. And I know that sounds Well, crazy. I saw a picture in the paper. It's I know, McKenna. I know. Well, did she act like McKenna? Yeah. <laughs> but something in my gut tells me otherwise. You always said go with your gut, right? You want me to see her? Yeah. That's why I came to you. See, I know you'll tell me straight. But if it is her, please don't tell her anything about this. Oh. I don't want her thinking any, any worse of me than she already does. Okay. I'll see you. Thanks, Mitch. Just talked to Dewey. Yeah, he's carrying a lot of weight. Yeah, yeah, he's going through a divorce. Oh, that'll do it. So you look nice. You on your way to a workout? Yeah. Actually, it's an investment opportunity. Listen, Mitch, if I buy into this gym, I have to find a way to attract new clients. Uh -huh. You work out, right? Every day. Why? Fear. Fear of what? Fear that someday I won't be physically able to pull somebody out of that surf out there. No, that won't work. People don't respond to fear. You work out a lot? Religiously. What? When I walk into a room, I don't want to be ignored. <laughs> Not a chance of that happening, Cookie. <laughs> Have a good workout. I'll see, see you. Ya. Bye. Yes. My name is Mitch Buchanan. I'm here to see McKenna Morgan. Is she expecting you? Uh, no. I'm, I'm an old friend. One minute, please. McKenna sends her apologies, but she's very busy. Is there something I can do to help? Um, no. Does she know I'm here? Absolutely. Uh, well, I'll only take a couple minutes. I'd like to see her. Uh, it's about Dewey. That's what she thought. Can I be candid? He's become very strange, very erratic lately. I mean, the other day he caused a major disruption at our press conference. She's actually become quite afraid of him. I told her to get a restraining order on him, but for the moment she refuses. If you're Dewey's friend, I keep him away. Well, I'd still like to see her. It'll just take a minute, please. It's important. I wish I could. I'm sorry. I tell you what. How about if I see her long enough for her to say she doesn't want to see me? Please. Of course. Follow me. Thank you. Watch your step.
sorry to disturb you, McKenna, but Mr. Buchanan insisted. Hello, Mitch. McKenna. Hi. How are you? Good. Sorry to barge in on you. If it's about Dewey, save it. I'm not interested. I'm really worried about you. Now he's worried? Why not two years ago when it would have made a difference? I'm sorry, Mitch. I can't be bothered with Dewey anymore. I told him it was a bad time. Why don't you give me a call? And we'll do lunch. Okay. I don't want this husband and his friend becoming a problem. I understand. So, was it McKenna or not? I don't know, I'm not sure. See what I mean? Okay, be specific. McKenna was always affectionate. You know, real touchy. This, this lady was cold, she was aloof. She said, let's do lunch. That's exactly what I'm talking about. It's, it, it's the little things. Those aren't little things, guys. That's nothing. Maybe, maybe not. But at least I'm not crazy. I don't know. Not by me, you're not. Then what happened to her? If this lady is an imposter, it's a very good question. your opinion on something. Good. I need yours. On what? Well, I'm trying to come up with a signature drink. Like a house special? Exactly. I've been working on it all afternoon. These are the ones I like. Okay. Okay, try this. I'm gonna call the one I select Perfect Nights. Uh, Donna, I'll tell you right now I don't like it. The glass. The glass, all this junk. It's like you're trying to hide something that's horrible. Noted. Okay, just taste it. All right. Mmm. I'd keep the salad. This definitely needs to be covered up. Okay. Now, taste this one. It may be a little sweet, but um, try it. A little sweet, huh? Griff! Mm. Water, water. Wow. This is the first time I've ever gotten that reaction from a man. Oh, no, it wasn't you. It was the drink. Oh. Got a little carried away with the grenadine. That's horrible. <sighs> Sandra. Uh, I mean, Sandra. <laughs> What's up? Harry's looking for you. Who's Harry? Her boyfriend. Oh. No, 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 no. It's not like that. But does Harry have a knife or something? I don't think so, but he's real mad. This is just terrible. All I wanted was that one great picture. You know, so casting directors would see me for what I really am. A and what's that? Um, Sandra here wants to be the next great female action hero. The next? Yeah. Who's the latest? Exactly. God, I'm dying of thirst. Uh, no. Oh. Mmm. This is delicious. Let me taste that. Donna, this is good. Let me see. Mmm. It's perfect. Well, ladies, I'm sorry I have to interrupt this, but uh, I have to go in. I wouldn't worry too much about Harry. I wasn't. I was worried about you. <laughs> That is so sweet of you, but I think I'll be fine. Well, I warned him. Yes, you did. We need something solid to prove whether it's McKenna or not. Fingerprints. Right. But how do we get those? Well, if I can get into the house, into the bathroom or the office, I need a cosmetics jar, letter opener, a pen, anything that she's touched recently. If I can get you in the house. I can get the fingerprints. Excuse me. Hey, Griff, Great. got a minute? One more time. I'm kind of busy, Mitch. Yeah, I can uh, see that. Thought maybe if you uh, oh, yeah. had some time, maybe you could help me with something. What are you talking about, a case? Yeah, like, kind of. <laughs> One second. 
Uh, ladies, thank you very much. Uh, that's a wrap. So, what type of case? Murder? Oh, yeah. All right, here's what I want. I'll dial the number. You ask for McKenna, tell her the photos she ordered already. But since she didn't order any photos, won't she think I'm nuts? Only if it's the real McKenna. If it's not, she'll buy into it. Say you'd like to deliver them just like she asked. And I go along. Then you're inside. It's a long shot, but it's all we got. 390-1736. Hello? Hey, this is uh, Griff Walker, the photographer. May I speak with McKenna, please? Uh, well, she's not available right now. What do you need? Tell them the photos she ordered already. Yeah, those are prints she ordered already. Well, when did she order these prints? Before she went to the fat farm. Uh, before she went to the fat farm. Listen, is McKenna there? Can I just speak with her? Just send them over. No, 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 they gotta be delivered. Look, what's going on? I get a rush order from McKenna. She tells me to take the stills of the new line and then hand deliver them. Okay, hand deliver them. All right, I will. Take some pictures of the girls in bikinis, put them in an envelope, and you and Ryan deliver them. Sounds good. Hey, I got the pictures. Where's Miss Morgan? Uh, she said to leave them. So just send her the bill and thank you very much. Uh, no problem, man. Um, let me show you what I did real quick so you can explain it to her. That's not necessary. You sure? Actually, I'm, uh, I'm a little busy, so... Um, I'm sorry. Is there any way I could borrow your restroom, please? Yeah, <laughs> actually, me too. I shouldn't have drank all that tea. Follow me. Thank you. First door on your right. Can I help you? Um, hi. I was just looking for the bathroom. Oh, it's right through there. Just got a little turn around. What's going on? Nothing. She was she was just looking. I was looking for the bathroom. I, I got lost. It it's really beautiful. Have a nice day. Thank you. Downtown ran these. Most of them belong to McKenna, the real McKenna. And the others? Well, there are some that we can't identify at all, but then there are others that we can't identify and they do not belong to McKenna. Well, it's the imposter, right? Well, the maid, or Ryan, or anybody else who was using the office. Yeah, look, DMV has some matches. There are two that belong to domestic help, and one belongs to a certain Jessica Aitkins a cocktail waitress slash actress from Tupelo, Mississippi. Well, guess who wins? Jessica's been in town for seven months. DMV has an address on her. Her hair's blonde, not brunette like McKenna's. Natural blonde, let's guess no. Green eyes, not brown like McKenna's. Same height, about the same weight. Did Dewey ever mention Jessica to you? No, but uh, he uh, should be training right now. I'll find him. I want to bring him up to date anyway. Okay, we'll, we'll check out Jessica. Meet you there. All right.
This is it. Let's see if she's home. She's probably back at the house, right? It's locked. Yeah, it's locked. Ryan, what are you doing? Ryan, that's breaking and entering. No, no. I'll be gentle. Just entering. Hey, hey, hey! You need the jaws of life or what? Who are you? The manager. Oh, well then. Hi there. We're friends of Jessica's from back home in Tupelo, Mississippi. Uh, uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're just supposed to meet her here then go out to dinner. Yeah, it just amazes us how y'all figure out those L.A. freeways. We thought we were late, and as it turns out, we're a half hour early. <laughs> um, you suppose we could just wait in there for her? I can't let you in. You can come back, or I can tell her you were here. Take your choice. All right, well, we'll come back. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Struck out, huh? Cable guy, 7D, Jessica Atkins. Not home. Oh, man, I don't want to have to come all the way back. You got cable? Nope. Well, it's uh, no more trouble to hook up two than there's one. Yeah? Mitch? Yeah. Free cable, huh? Whatever works. All right. Ooh. Videotapes. Dateline interview, October 1994. Century Plaza Fashion Show in 1995. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this year's Azure Blue Fashion Show. We're very excited about Good this afternoon, season. ladies and gentlemen, is, and welcome to this year's Azure Blue Fashion Show. Come up north, Jesse. Loose the draw, sugar. I hope you enjoy it as much as we did. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this year's Azure Blue Fashion Show. Hey, Mitch. What you got? I found a file called McKenna. She's got her personal history from the day she was born. Family members, co-workers, a list of enemies. And look here on her friends. Mitch Buchanan. Lifeguard with Dewey, divorced, ex-wife Gail, one son, Hobie, a guest at the wedding in 1987, speaker at the Serving Hall of Fame indoctrination. Looks like she's got a crib sheet on who's who in McKenna and Dewey's lives. Mm, it's a crash course on McKenna Morgan 101. You know, if, if Jessica dyes her hair and pops in some brown contact lenses. Face and a nose job. And with those videotapes of McKenna, she could learn to walk the walk and talk the talk. Dewey's right. She's not his wife. You know, if, if they kill McKenna on Friday night, sell the company Monday morning, boom, payday. Keep her away from family, friends. She and Dewey are separated. They haven't slept together in months. They don't even talk. They don't see each other. You can do it, huh? You do your homework. You can get away with murder. All it takes is 48 hours. A weekend. Let's talk to the manager. Where is the woman who lives here? Hadn't been around for a while. Would you know where she is? She could be at work. Do you have that number? I don't even know where she works. So if there's any emergency, do you have any way of reaching her? I got a pager number. So tomorrow we sign the contracts. And after the sale is finalized, you divorce your husband, get the big payoff, and then retire from the world of fashion. Just like we planned. I spent a lot of time learning this part. I even had plastic surgery. Is there a point to all this? Yeah. The point is, I really like this life. People want to take my picture, ask my opinion on things. I tell you, it uh, sure beats the tar out of slinging drinks in Tupelo. Well, yeah, it's been a nice ride. And two days, it's going to be a nice memory. I think there's a way for me to stay here and be McKenna Morgan. <laughs> well, that's not going to happen. So don't push it. Hello. Hello. Did you 
Did you page me? Miss Akins, this is your apartment manager. It's a guy here who wants to talk with you. All right, listen very carefully. Your life depends on how well you understand me and what you do after I hang up. Are you listening? Yes. Who is it? My apartment manager's at the Bed of Water Lake. All right, when this is over and he has what he wants, he's going to kill you. Do you believe me? Yes, I do. All right. If you want to live, we have to meet. You come here right now, and I can help you. OK. I have to go to my apartment. No, no, no. Not till after the papers are signed. The manager has to go in. Everything you gave me to study is right there out in the open. OK, fine. I'll have Leo take you. I don't want you going anywhere alone until this is all over. But before you go, what do you say we take a little trip down memory lane, huh? Just so you get a clear picture of exactly what it is. I can do. Now, I tried to talk her into selling that company for three years. We've had this conversation at least a hundred times in the last three years. Why don't you get it in your head? Now is the time to sell. You realize the problem? No. No. Final. You know, the fact that you even bring it up is so ridiculous. What are you doing? Closing a deal. One last chance to make a life or death decision. She made the wrong one. Get in here! <gasps> Give me the gun! Come on, come on, come on, come on! I set the gun down, remember? And you picked it up. Let's go, let's go, let's go! You weren't wearing gloves, were you? Hmm. Now, you go do what you gotta do. But you remember one thing. Your prints are all over that gun. The sprinklers went off. My clothes are all there. Before you go in, you have to sign off. Come on down to the office. Not you, just her. She just has to sign a release. Uh, hey there. Excuse me, you. Hi there. Uh, you look nice and strong. Could you help me move this out of the way, please? Please. Oh, come on, help a girl out. Thank you. How's it going? How do you think? It was terrible before your phone call. Who's your friend? Detective Byron Brown, LAPD. Perfect. Look, not that any of this makes a difference, but I never knew what he had planned when I took this gig. And then, after he killed McKenna, I was in up to my eyeballs and too afraid to run. Well, we're gonna need more than that. Guy's got a hell of a lot of money. It's going to take more than circumstantial evidence to convict him. Like a body and a smoking gun. I know where the body is. Or at least where it was three days ago. We need you to cooperate, Miss Aitkins. Forget it. I talk, I die. We can protect you. <sighs> yeah, right. He's going to try and take you out whether you talk or not. Now, your only chance is to help us nail him. Uh-uh. No way. Look, you don't cooperate. You're on your own. McKenna, how's the apartment? It was a disaster. Can I get you a drink? No, thanks. Chad Lindsay. Good evening, Mr. Lindsay. I hope I'm not interrupting. Who's this? Think of me as a business partner. Business partner? 
That's correct. Look, who the hell is this? Perhaps my friend could put things in proper perspective. Hello, Chad. Who, who is this? You're a very bad boy. And a very bad shot. Guess what? I'm alive. Okay. We'll talk later. Bye. McKenna. We'll be in touch. They would have dumped these by now. Nah, they gotta wait for the barge to be full. There it is. I mean, she's gotta be in here. Open it up. You looking for me, Chad? How the hell? Does it matter? Where's the Englishman? He'll be here. Good. Why? Why did you try to kill me? Because I made Azure Blue the success it was. I made all the decisions. You made the magazine covers. I made you rich and famous. And now I'm going to take what's mine. And I'm going to make sure that you and your partner are good and dead. plan almost worked. Oh, it still will, Buchanan. Well, actually, it won't. We have you on tape. Why did you try to kill me? Because I made Azure Blue the success it was. Pity, old boy, isn't it? All that work for naught. Told you I was good sugar. McKenna is dead.
Alright. Come on. Yeah, all right. Come on. Alright, let's go. You alright? Yeah, I'm fine. You? Yeah. Well, he's lucky you're a bad shot. Who's a bad shot? You missed him. I wasn't aiming at him. Yeah, right. Well, I wasn't. Hey, listen to me. Shut, Shut up! up! Are you trying to tell me in the dead of night you fire off one round that hits the tank in the exact spot causing that tank to explode? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yes, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Now, come on, it was a fluke. It was not. Look, nobody is that good. You saw it. Hey, I want to talk to you. Yeah, run. But that's not going to change anything. If I don't get you today, I'll get you tomorrow. Thought you were going to keep on running. Wasn't running, Harry. I was just trying to find a place where we wouldn't be disturbed. Oh? Yeah, if we were in public, you might think people are watching. So what? You afraid of getting your butt whipped in public? No. I just wanted this to be private. I want to make sure this is really between you and me and you're not doing this for Sandra, but for yourself. Why are you doing this, Harry? You know why. No, I, I really don't. Because of what you did. What did I do? You know, you know what I think? I think you're doing this because you're scared. Scared? Yeah, I think you really love Sandra, but you're scared you may lose her. Oh, is that what you think? Yes. I think if you stop for a second, you realize that, that fighting me is going to get you nothing. This isn't between you and me. This is between you and you. Between me and me? Absolutely. Between what you want and what you're afraid to lose between what you love and what you fear. I mean, it's the same for all of us, Harry, one way or the other. I mean, when we're mad at someone, isn't it ourselves we're really angry at? Well, you know what I think? No, what do you think? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> okay, how about this then, huh? If I see you again, I'm gonna break every bone in your body. Are we clear? Huh? Don't make me go through this again. Never quite the same, is it? No, it's not. The light, the clouds, the wind. Pat McKenna loved the water. I know she did. I'm gonna go away for a while. The mountains, I think. You understand that? You know, I never thought I'd get tired of looking at the ocean. Thanks for everything, for being there. Okay. I'll see you.